Hello everyone, welcome back to the WASD Benchmark YouTube channel. Today we're diving into something mind-blowing. Imagine a mini PC is so tiny it literally fits in your jacket pocket, but inside it packs the brand new AMD Ryzen AI 300 series CPU with new gen AI acceleration and integrated graphics that can challenge a discrete GPU. Yeah, you hear that right. This thing is smaller than a bowl of noodles, but it can run Cyberpunk 2077 at over 60 FPS in 1080p resolution. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly why this Asus Expert Center PN54 could change the way we think about compact computing forever. We will look at design, the specs, and of course, real gaming benchmarks to see if this little box is worth your money. So, buckle up, hit that subscribe button, and let's jump right in. All right, let's take a closer look at the design of this tiny power horse. The Asus Expert Center PN54 has a clean, minimalist look with a matte black finish that feels premium but doesn't scream for attention. And just check out these dimensions. It measures only 130 by 130 millimeters with a thickness of just 34. Like I said, this is smaller than a regular bowl of noodles and it weighs about 650 grams when you have got two RAM sticks and NVMe drive installed. Yeah, literally you can pick it up with one hand and even slide it to your jacket pocket if you really wanted to. On the top, there's fingerprint scanner so you can log in securely with Windows Hello. Pretty cool feature for a mini PC, right? Around the sides, you have got a plenty of ventilation holes for airflow and underneath there are four rubber feet you can unscrew to mount the device on the back of your monitor with a 10 by 10 centimeter VESA bracket that comes in the box. Overall, it's super clean design that won't clutter your desk and if you would rather keep it out of sight, just hang it behind your screen or on the wall. Before we jump into batteries, let's talk about what versions of this mini PC are actually out there because this part can get a bit confusing. Right now, there are two main configurations for the ASUS Expert Center PN. 54. The first one is called the Bearborn or Kit version. It comes with no pre installed RAM, no storage, and no Windows license, so you can customize everything by yourself and keep the costs way down. Okay, with this version, you can get or choose between two CPUs the more powerful Ryzen 7 350 with the iGPU Radeon 860M GPU, or the more affordable Ryzen 5 340 that use the Radeon 8. 40M GPU. For memory, there are two DDR5 slots, each supporting up to 32GB 30, of RAM per slot, so you can install up to 64GB total. Storage is also flexible, you get two NVMe PCI Gen 4 slots with four lanes per each, and every slot can handle SSDs up to 2TB in capacity, so four Total. When it comes to wireless connectivity, things are a little less clear. There are models with Wi-Fi 7 using MediaTek MT7925 chip and others with Wi-Fi 6C using the MediaTek MT7922. Also, the official specs don't always mention the MPU, but based on the CPU architecture, there's an XDNA NPU built right into the chip to handle AI workloads. On the other side, you can get a pre-configured mini PC version which comes ready to go with 16 to 64 gigabytes of RAM and NVMe SSD ranging from 256 gigabytes up to 2 terabytes total. And of course, Windows 11 pre-installed either home Pro or Internet of Things Enterprise Edition. And one more thing, this review is among the first in the world, maybe even the first because the product was just unveiled at CES and isn't officially for sale yet, so there are still many details that might change as ASUS finalized the launch. Okay, let's talk about the brain powering this little beast. Inside the PN54, you will find the brand new Ryzen 7 350. CPU. This chip uses a hybrid architecture based on Zen 5 cores. In total, you get 8 cores and 16 threads split between 4 performance cores that boosts up to 5 GHz and 4 efficiency cores that go up to big 3.5 GHz. And the best part, power efficiency. Depending on your cooling and power settings, the TDP can scale anywhere from 15 watts to 54 watts. We run a stress test in Cinebench and this tiny system managed to sustain a full 
54 volt loading without thermal clothing. That's impressive considering the size. Temperature stayed under 90 degrees Celsius the whole time for a modern AMD CPU that's totally safe, especially since the thermal limit is 100 degrees. So, even max load, you don't have to worry about overheating for day-to-day -day use, the temps are much lower anyway. This is the kind of performance you would expect from a high-performance laptop chip, but here it's packed into something smaller than a paper bag book. In our test unit, we have installed two 16GB sticks running in dual channel at uh, 5600 mega transfers per second, which is currently the fastest support speed for this mini PC. In our configuration, we have got a 1TB Gen 4 NVMe drive pre-installed, which is more than enough for Windows apps and solid gaming library. If you are planning to run heavier workloads like video editing or large AI models, you can easily upgrade both memory and storage later. All you need is screwdriver, no special tool required. This kind of expandability in such a small chassis is honestly pretty impressive and it's one of the reasons this mini PC stands out compared to most compact systems. Alright, let's break down the ports and connections because this little box is way more versatile than it looks. On the front panel you get a pretty impressive selection. There's one USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C port supporting speeds up to 10 gigabits per second along with uh, two USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-A ports offering the same bandwidth for fast peripherals. You also have a combo audio jack for headset or microphone and power button and even a dedicated copilot button so you can instantly launch Windows AI features. One thing worth mentioning is that there's no SSD card reader on the front which feels like a missed opportunity, especially for creators who work with cameras or portable storage. Moving to the top side of the case, there's fingerprint reader for secure logins, although honestly, Asus kind of missed an opportunity to integrate it into the power button like we see on another some laptops. That would have made the experience even clearer, cleaner. Around the back, the connectivity gets even more serious. You will find one USB 4 Type-C port which supports DisplayPort 2.1 standard 100 watts of power delivery and speeds up to 40 gigabits per second. It can also output 5 volts 3 amps if you need to charge any devices. Next to that there's one USB 3.2 Gen 2 type A port and one USB 2.0 type A port for older peripherals. And for this place you get one HDMI 2.1 supporting FRL 8 for high bandwidth displays and imagine two DisplayPort 1.4 outputs capable of 8.1 gigabits per second each for high resolution monitors. Networking is handled by 2.5G Ethernet and in our unit there was actually a second LAN port pre-installed so you can run dual connections right out of the box if you need them. Finally, there's DC input jack for the power adapter. Altogether, this is easily one of the most complete I.O. configurations you will find on any mini PC and it's honestly amazing they fit this much into something smaller than a paper bag book. Whether you are connecting multiple displays, fast storage or charging your gear, the PN54 has pretty much everything. So built as the built-in SD card slot would have made it even better. And now let's talk about the AI side of this tiny machine because that's one of the biggest reasons AMD even made this new Ryzen AI lineup. The Ryzen 7 350 comes with as I said, an XDNA based NPU unit which in theory can deliver up to 50 teraprations per second of compute power for AI tasks. But in practice, there's honestly not much real world use for it yet. Most workloads today still rely heavily on CPU and GPU performance rather than dedicated AI hardware. For example, LM Studio, which is Local language model app mostly depends on system memory and CPU cores. Other local models are also more orientated towards GPU acceleration. On the Windows side, Copilot Plus isn't even available yet, so features like Windows Studio effects that actually leverage the NPU are still coming in the future updates. Right now, the only built-in feature you might use is live caption and even that doesn't really tap into the NPU in any meaningful way. So. At this point, the whole AI narrative feels more like a future promise 
in the next couple of years we'll probably see more applications and workflows that can actually take advantage of the MPU sitting inside this CPU. Until then, it's honestly more of a gimmick and your day-to-day -day experience will still be driven mainly by the CPU and GPU power. Let's move on the GPU performance in productivity task because high GPU have come a long way in the past few years. The Ryzen 7 350 includes the Radeon 860M iGPU which we tested both in synthetic benchmarks and in real-world gaming scenarios. Overall, the performance is quite solid for an integrated solution. In most tests, it landed somewhere close to what you would get from an older Radeon RX 570 or a G4 GTX 1060 3 gigabits version, which is honestly pretty impressive considering this GPU is built into the CPU. However, it's important to know that the Radeon 860M still falls behind more modern entry-level discrete GPUs like RX 6400 and GTX 1650 cards. Those cards can deliver high frame rates in demanding titles and significantly faster rendering speed in productivity application. For everyday tasks like office work, media consumption or light content creation, the integrated GPU is more than enough. It can even handle moderate video editing and simpler 3D scenes without much trouble. But if your workload depends heavily on GPU acceleration, especially in applications like Blender, DaVinci Resolve or large Photoshop projects, you will definitely notice the limitation compared to dedicated cards. Overall, this iGPU is a huge leap over the what integrated graphics could do a few years ago, but you should still think of it as comparable to mid-tier GPUs from several generations back, rather than something that replaces modern discrete cards. And now, let's wrap things up by talking about power consumption, because this is one area where the PN54 really stands out. When the system is completely idle, just sitting on the desktop, it draws only 30 watts. While streaming 1080p video on YouTube, power usage goes up slightly to around 15 to 18 watts. When you start doing something heavier, like rendering video, it climbs to about 78 watts. And during gaming, the highest we recorded was around 83 watts under full load, CPU and iGPU. For a system that can run AAA games and handle AI workloads, that level of energy efficiency is just insane. And of course, if you're only doing light office tasks or browsing, your actual power consumption will be much lower. This is why the PN54 makes so much sense in the current market, low power, small size and surprisingly high performance. So, who is this little box actually for? The ASUS Expert Center PN54 is clearly a product aimed to a very specific group of people. If you work in an office, create content or develop AI applications and you need something that's compact, power efficient and still powerful enough to run modern workloads, this mini PC is honestly a fantastic option. If you ask me, it also makes sense for businesses that want to deploy dozens of hundreds of systems without taking up much space or consuming a ton of electricity. And if you're just a tech enthusiast who wants a tiny silent rig that can still game at 1080p and handle serious productivity, this is probably one of the coolest mini PC you can buy at this moment. Of course, keep in mind that pricing hasn't been officially announced yet, the previous generation PN3 started around 5 to 400 bucks here in Europe and in USA, but so this one will likely be in the same ballpark or slightly higher. Either way, this is a unique machine and it shows how far integrated graphics and AI acceleration have come in the just the past couple of years. If you found this video helpful, drop a like, subscribe and tell me in the comments what you think about the new Ryzen AI CPUs. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.